The Lord be with you. Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Slackwood Presbyterian Church. Whether you've joined us in our sanctuary this morning or if you are joining us online, we are delighted that you are here worshiping with us this morning on this steamy July day. This morning, our guest preacher is Margaret Brungard. Margaret is a rising senior in the Master Divinity program at Princeton Theological Seminary. She is a candidate for ministry under the care of the First Presbyterian Church of Madawan, New Jersey, and our own Coastlands Presbytery. We are delighted to have Margaret here with us in the pulpit this morning. Are there any announcements anyone would like to bring to everyone's attention? I would, as always, uh, commend to your attention to the announcements that are printed in the bulletin, that are sent out by email, and that are available at slackwoodchurch.org, our website. Whether you are coming from across the street or from across town, whether you are here in a pew or you're looking at us on a screen, whether you're coming to us from across the river, across the country, across the world, know that you are welcome in this place. Let us worship God. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship printed in the bulletin. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. Let us worship God. Let us pray. All praise be unto you, O God, maker of heaven and earth. You cause the day to dawn with promise of new life. You watch over us through the night, giving us rest from our labors. Fill us now with the presence of your Holy Spirit, so that what we say proclaims your glory, and what we do reflects your will. Through Christ our Redeemer, in whose name we gather. Amen. God is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. God is close to all who call on him in truth, listening to their cries for help and offering them salvation. So let us bring our confession to God, knowing that God will hear our prayers and forgive. Let us pray. God of infinite mercy, we confess that we do not always have the humility to ask for help, rely on our own judgment, and ignore your wisdom. 
We push away people that you have put in our path to love us. Our pride prevents us from asking you to sustain us. Forgive us, Lord, and welcome us when we humble ourselves before you. Amen. The love of God was made manifest among us in that God sent Jesus Christ into the world so that we might live through Christ. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to be the remedy for our sins. As we receive the assurance of new life in Christ, let us also love one another. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand. That understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first scripture lesson is Psalm 85, verses 1 through 13. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the inequity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God, of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again so that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to them in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Our second scripture reading today is from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is a friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of the Lord. Please join me in prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As a teenager and youth group, we had a list of some of our greatest hits that we like to sing together. And one of my favorites is a worship song that I believe you all sang last week, Seek Ye First. The first verse is pulled from Matthew 6:33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The second verse in the song is from our passage today and can also be found in Matthew 7. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. I liked this song in particular because I always pictured God just waiting on the other side of the door, really excited for my visit, just waiting to fling open the door and welcome me in. And so as I was reflecting on this passage from Luke, there were many knocking and answering images that were floating around in my mind, including Seek Ye First. But nothing seemed quite right to discuss in this sermon. Thought maybe knock-knock jokes. Uh, my little two-year-old, every time he sees any closed door, says, knock, knock. <laughs> Some excitement, waiting for something to happen. I was even thinking of Guns N' Roses and knocking on Heaven's door. <laughs> and eventually, I decided to search for stories about knocking. And as the results came in, I was really surprised by what I found and couldn't believe I didn't think of it sooner. Almost all of the results were scary stories about knocking. Edgar Allan Poe's Raven, for example. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as if someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. 
I scrolled through a whole bunch of creepy stories about ghosts and ghouls and things that go bump in the night, all quietly knocking on the walls or the windows or the doors. And then I thought about all the horror movies where the heroes are running away from the villain and they're seeking shelter. And then there's that silence while we all wait in the audience for the eventual banging that's gonna come on the door from the outside. In fact, there are so many scary examples of knocking on doors that it blew my mind that I hadn't considered this basic element of knocking and answering, fear. I currently am completing a summer internship as a hospital chaplain. And as part of our training and our uh, education requirements, we were required to come up with a few measurable goals uh, to work on over this summer. And one of my goals, honestly, is knocking on at least three closed doors each day during my regular rounds. It's one of my goals because as silly as it sounds, knocking on a closed door in a hospital is scary. If I'm just walking around and I'm cold calling on people just to check in, introduce myself, see how the patients are doing, I've found that it's much easier to enter a room when I can see exactly what's going on. I know that the person's awake, they might look friendly or smiling, they seem like they're ready for a visit, and I feel more confident approaching them to introduce myself. With a closed door, I don't know what's on the other side. The patient might be asleep, they might be in a lot of pain. There's any number of things that could be going on that are scary. But my goal is to get rid of this fear because the people behind the closed doors need just as much care as the people who happen to have their doors open. The only difference between the two is my own fear of the unknown. And so with our passage today, Luke is walking us through what it's like to turn to God in prayer. We begin with a version of the Lord's Prayer that we say together in church each Sunday. We then have a story about persistence in knocking. And then the passage concludes with the reassurance that if you ask, you'll receive. If you seek God, you will find God. If you knock, God will open the door to you. And on the surface, this is a pretty straightforward passage. Jesus, who normally speaks in confusing and sometimes conflicting parables, gives a refreshingly clear answer to a question about how we should pray and offers some assurance that God does hear our prayers. But digging a little bit deeper, Jesus invites us into a relationship with God through prayer that is a little bit outside of our comfort zones. Consider the language of the Lord's Prayer and how bold it is. Give us our bread. Forgive us our debts. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Yes, it begins and ends with praise for the Lord, but the prayer does not meekly or humbly dance around requesting these things. In the original Greek, as in the English we read today, these words are in the imperative, a mood that typically indicates a demand. They are forceful requests put to God. Is that how we usually approach God when we pray? As children, when we first learn to pray, we are gently steered away from demanding too much from God. If you pray for a big bowl of candy to miraculously appear in front of you when you open your eyes, you're probably going to be a bit disappointed. And so we learn to ask for things that God can help us with to achieve the things that we want. We don't ask God for a promotion. We ask God to give us the courage to talk to our boss about a promotion. And overall, this is a good and appropriate way to pray to God. But I believe that in this passage, Jesus is asking us to think a little bit more deeply about the kind of relationship we want to have with God. We are being called here to a truly intimate connection, one that perhaps inspires a bit of fear in us. And that's because what we are being asked to do is to really bear our souls to God, 
to ask for things that are lurking in the deepest recesses of our minds, perhaps even the things that we are trying to bury and ignore. We are comfortable asking God for things like healing and strength, for courage, for protection, for safety. It might seem as if these prayers are already asking enough of God. But God invites us to keep going and offers us shelter from the storm of our own minds. God is there to hear about our feelings of guilt, depression, failure, struggle, self-doubt. God's there to hear about how we hurt others, intentionally or unintentionally. God's ready to hear about our anger. All those feelings that we hate feeling, all of those things that make us say, I just wish I was a better person. The truth is, we all feel those feelings, and God knows we feel them too. By being bold enough to present them to God in prayer, we're opening ourselves up to a more meaningful relationship with the Lord, who's able to soothe and comfort us, and perhaps provide us a bit more clarity on a way to move forward. God is depicted in this passage as a loving father, both in the prayer we see at the beginning and later on in the discussion of the gifts that God provides. A depiction of God the Father can sometimes be tricky because, unfortunately, not everyone has a great experience of having a loving father here on earth. But God the Heavenly Father is generous, forgiving, and loving beyond all human comprehension and ability. A passage from the Old Testament comes to mind when I think about the character of God, which is found in Genesis 18. In this chapter, God has made the decision to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah for their wickedness, and Abraham boldly talks back to the Lord, asking him if he would spare the whole city of Sodom if there are 50 righteous people to be found within. God says, yes. I'd spare the city for 50 righteous people. Abraham continues to negotiate that number down, and each time God says, yes, I would spare the city if that number of righteous people are found within. The story shows two things. One, that God can be spoken to boldly, and two, that we are able to speak boldly to God because ultimately, God is a merciful and loving God concerned with righteousness. And so I'd like us to consider today that perhaps we are currently only approaching God through an open door. We know what to expect in our relationship with God. We're feeling pretty comfortable with our prayer lives. And we think we know what God wants to hear from us. Now I invite us to approach the closed door, the one that's hiding our innermost thoughts and feelings. As we knock on this door, I want us to hold that confidence of Abraham in our hearts, knowing that God is merciful and loving. Knocking on the door can be scary when we don't know what's to be found within. But Jesus answers this question by proclaiming that the door shall be open to us. Do not let your fear prevent you from forming a rich and intimate relationship with the Lord, because God can handle it. Whatever your worries, your fears, your concerns, God knows them, hears them, and is ready for them. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us now turn to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, you are merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. In our world in which so much is broken, <clears throat> you are the rock we can cling to in the storm. When all else abandons us, you remain. Lord, we come to you today as your humble and faithful servants with many different worries and concerns weighing heavy on our hearts. As we share our prayers with each other or silently with you, we take comfort in the knowledge that you hear even the quietest cries of our souls. You have asked us to approach you for help boldly and without fear. And yet, Lord, we struggle to give all of ourselves to you. Help all of us today within this worship community and beyond to know that we do not walk through life alone, but that through our collective prayer, we share and divide our pain and celebrate our joys. We lift to you now all those who are on our prayer list, those who are needing God's guidance and direction. In particular, we pray for Kate, Carrie, Kenny, Sharon, and John. Lord, we also lift up those who are going through difficult times and need your care and soothing presence. Beth, Jack, Bill and Carol, Arlene, Marilyn, Mylan, Layla, Jean, Rodney, and Debbie and Doug. Lord, hold all of these close to you and anyone else who's on our hearts right now that didn't make it onto this list, but we know that you know the concerns. We lift them up to you now. Lord, we pray for our world, for those who live in fear, and for those who are in pain, and for those who mourn. For the people that we might never meet, but that we still hold close to our hearts. Lord, we pray for your creation. Help us to be good stewards of this beautiful planet, and to join together to care for your awesome work. Lord, we lift up all of those who feel abandoned, heart sick, weak in faith and full of doubt. Though we are imperfect, hold us in our times of greatest need and help us to remember that you always walk with us, even when we would neglect our relationship with you. Lord, send your Holy Spirit to give us comfort and strength in the week ahead. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All good gifts come to us from the Lord. Whatever your task, put yourselves into it, as done for the Lord. The giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let us respond generously to the many blessings we have received by returning a portion to the Lord.
information as printed in your bulletin. Generous and loving God, you have provided for us in more ways than we know. Bless these humble gifts so that your love may be multiplied throughout the world and that all will come to know your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The last hymn is 728, and it just might be helpful to have a little road map here. Uh, the beginning, the top few systems here are. Uh, that's basically verse what is kind of a prank. Then when you get down to the bottom here, you see two, three, four as a repeat sign. After you sing all the way to the end, that's where you repeat to, to where the two is. And then you do it all again for the three and the four. You never do go back to this beginning part. you leave this place today feeling emboldened by God's overwhelming love for you. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in truth and love. Amen. Amen.